Podcast. All right, guys, another episode without an intro because we have a guest and I really, really want to dive into today's topic. So without further ado, welcome Max Tuning. What's up, everyone? <laughs> Real excited to be here. All right. So we were just talking. Uh, I was just asking Max how it feels because he has his own uh, podcast. Uh, Don't be sour. Correct. And I was asking him how it was to be a guest instead of being the t- instead of being the host. So how does it feel? It's definitely a lot less stress to be the guest yes. than the host. And you were mentioning about how when you're interviewing someone, you like are always thinking of like the next uh, question, and whatnot, yeah. which sometimes is, ba- is bad because then you, you're not even like processing what the person's saying because you're just like, how can I make this flow into like what the next question's going to be or yeah. something? So it, it's it's a learning curve for sure to be yeah. to be someone who interviews someone that I'm still learning. Do you feel like people comment on your interview skills? I thought I was going to be terrible. And surprisingly, yeah. the first episode I put out, luckily it was with like Christian, someone I was really comfortable with and yeah. friends with. So it was, it was the easiest way to do it. Yeah. But I got a lot of positive feedback on my interview skills, but I was worried. I think it just flows. Like usually when I'm in, talking to someone, I'll have like maybe five to 10 bullet points I want to touch on whether or not I hit all those. It doesn't really matter because yeah. and so usually I always end up having more content than I need in terms of questions. And it just... So one thing turns in another and you start, yeah. you know, going into like random topics and yeah. didn't even plan on it. Yeah. For me, it's been good. I think I only had one person who was like, you need to like, like just stick to interviewing and not comment as much. And I was like, well, this podcast is not just me being no. like an interviewer and just asking my guests a ton of questions. Like it's about the flow and I want to like relate to my life. Cause that's what people want to hear too. But overall, yeah, I think same. I think I was a little nervous cause I was like, I was listening to a bunch of uh, master classes on like actual like news reporters and how they interview. And I was like, well, I think podcasts are a little bit different cause you want to get a little bit more personal with your guest. Yeah, for so. sure. I don't, I think there's, I, I don't, I don't like to like analyze like in depth that much mm-hmm. on, on stuff. And cause I think you, then you start getting the like, and, paralysis by analysis, right? You like never end up going after it. And I got that. The biggest feedback I get from being an interviewer and I've tried to get better at it is interjecting a lot. And it's usually because someone will say something and I have like a thought. And when I'm talking to someone naturally, I feel like that's how people talk is they kind of cut people off. They can, then they change the direction of the conversation. Mm -hmm. And with the podcast, I didn't want it to be a like, so tell me about you. And then I sit back for 30 minutes and I'm like, so like, what were you like as a child? Yeah. Sit back for 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I want it to be like a casual conversation. And some people either, I think people are going to like and dislike every type of I agree. interviewer, interviewee, the guest, you know, yeah. it okay. can't please anyone. All right, guys. So I didn't even give you guys a formal intro of Max, but uh, I wrote down influencer, YouTuber, yeah. owner of Everford and owner of Sour Strips. Anything else? Owner of? Dog dad. Dog dad. Boyfriend. Yeah, boyfriend. Now we're going to dig. We're yeah. going to we're gonna talk about that. that. That pretty much covers it. I still identify as a YouTuber. That's okay. like what I, that's like the most, well, I don't want to say it's the most thing that has, is in my brain at all times, but it's a constant top of my brain. It's not like a secondary thing that I do that on Tuesdays I, oh, I got to remember, I got to go film a video. Yeah. It's, it's like my world revolves around like what my YouTube content is. You've been really, I think you're the only one that I know that's been like super, I mean, Christian too, but you're, I think you're like even more consistent with YouTube. You would think that that would benefit me in some way. Like I, I do have a very loyal audience, which I, I lo- love and it's cool seeing people stick with me since day one, but I've always felt like with like the algorithm and everyone's trying to like, you know, figure out what works and whatnot. I thought over these years I would get rewarded by the algorithm of like, you know what, this guy has just been consistently putting out content, doesn't really miss, has really good engagement. We're gonna we're gonna put him out to the recommended a whole lot more. It's never been the case for me. No. But no, I mean I just Do you feel like YouTube is like Instagram now where it's like the newer people are blowing up faster than like OGs? Yeah, I hate it. Yeah. YouTube's the same way? It's just, it's it's uh it can be disheartening. Yeah. I, 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 think. I agree. That's why with mine, like, to be honest, like I get like good and going and then I just like, I could just get annoyed with YouTube. So I props you. It, it's one of I those things it. that y- you look at a lot of other people and it's not like, I don't want to call it jealousy, but it's more frustration with the yeah. system because it's, you know, when someone blows up really quickly and you're like, I've been doing this for years and years and years and putting in time and, and progressing and, you know, and investing and working on my craft and you see people kind of blow up overnight for 
I don't want to say ridiculous things, but just for very quick yeah. things that t make it to take it to the top. I'm like, do I suck? Has, <laughs> has my content actually been trash for the past yeah. decade? Yeah. Or is it just, I, I don't know. It's, it's a, is it my gets, personality shitty or what? <laughs> I know. I'm like, I, I, sometimes you don't get it. And I've, uh, I've been very in my head about it. That's probably, I've never been someone who has been like, I suffer from depression. I suffer from anxiety mm -hmm. because I don't know what that feels like to be like, Oh, that's depression. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh that's anxiety. I'm like, I, but I think if I had to pinpoint something that I think is probably that it'd be how my mind works with YouTube. Yeah. I get very in my head about that. And mm -hmm. I guess if I had to label it, it probably does have things that mess with my anxiety and yeah. makes me depressed sometimes by the, based on the, the, the numbers, numbers on the screen, yeah, which is yeah. dumb, but no, it's happens to everyone. Yeah. And we'll dig deep a little bit about, about mental health too. So, okay. For people who don't know, give us a little bit of background of where you were raised and how you started your social media journey. Well, see, my mom met my dad. They fell in <laughs> love and had sex. Um, no, I'm from I'm from Virginia originally, and I, I essentially started deep Southern Virginia, and then the older I got, the more Northern Virginia I moved. So it was like Roanoke, Richmond, and eventually I got to the point where I was essentially in Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. just right on top of Virginia, kinda. Um, so I lived there most of my life until I was 29. And then I had the opportunity to move to Texas because of uh, a lot of, a lot of like-minded entrepreneurs such as, you know, Christian Shawley, Joe, you know, my friend group has expanded a lot since then, but back then it was just a couple of people that I knew. Um, and I picked up my life, moved, moved here and I've been in Texas ever since. And I, for most of my life, I went down the very traditional path. I, you know, high school, straight into college, um, then worked a desk job for like three years. I went to very, I thought that was like the path I was gonna go. Mm -hmm. And I started social media right when I graduated college. So I graduated school and started making YouTube videos at the exact same time. What degree did you get? Business administration management. Okay. Which a lot of people be like, oh, that makes sense. It's what you're doing. So you're applying. I'm like, no, I don't remember anything from mm -hmm. college. <laughs> Literally anything. I remember a couple of key like, buzzwords yeah. from like my accounting and my economics class, yeah. but like actual, I was just retaining the information to apply it to the test to pass and then on to the next thing. Yeah. I, I wasn't being like, oh, that really is good. Like marketing insight. I should really like, you know, keep this for my future. Yeah. You know, no one around me was being an entrepreneur. Times were different back in my day. Mm -hmm. And then I started my social media journey three years into my uh, full-time job. I tried balancing both realized that the opportunity for social media was uh, being hindered by my corporate job yeah. because my ability to travel, collab, meet other people, and just, I no longer needed it financially. So took the leap and that was 2016 mm -hmm. in July. Best decision ever made, scariest decision ever made, but yeah. now I haven't looked back and. But like, were you, were you like, I'm just going to pick up a camera and like, your first thing was vlogging or was it Instagram or what was it? Like, I'm just going to pick it up and record no, my life or. I don't remember the order of like how all the different apps came out mm -hmm. at the time, but YouTube was always what I gravitated to. I definitely had Instagram, but mm -hmm. you know, it was just random pictures of my food. Yeah. Like literally my first photo on Instagram is a, a, the, a rack of 45 pound plates. And I said like the journey starts here or something Holy like, shit, okay. but it was like, who knew that like later down the road, I'd actually get into the fitness yeah. community like mm -hmm. that. But, um, no, I, YouTube is what I gravitated to just because I was a big consumer of YouTube before I started YouTube. So a lot of the people that are, I don't, I say not around anymore, like they're dead, but not making content anymore. Like yeah. they did. I followed a lot of these people, one of which that I watched was Christian before okay. I ever met Christian. Okay. Um, so I was a fan of a lot of fitness influencers. Mm -hmm. And then I just, I had a buddy who I watched named Nick Wright, who happened to move to my area, who was a big YouTuber at the time. Mm -hmm. And he was like 30,000 subscribers, which back then was massive. And he happened to move to my area. So it was almost like the serendipitous guy I watch on YouTube happens to move in my town. I message him. We happen. he happens to see it. We work out, we become friends. Mm -hmm. I start being in his videos. He's like, you should start making a channel as well. And that's essentially how it happened. But I just, I liked 
fitness content. So I was like, let me make my type of content. And back yeah. then it was very, Hey guys, here's a six minute video of my shoulder workout. Then I'd make like four videos a week and it would just be like each of my workouts. And the next week it'd be, here's my, here's this week's shoulder workout. And then the yeah. next week, here's this week's shoulder workout. And it was very simple, very basic. And then over time it just evolved into, Hey, this is the food that I'm eating. Hey, this is the soap that I use. Yeah. All right. Hey guys, we're going paintballing. Let me yeah, take you with me. Yeah, so it, yeah. it just evolved. Yeah. People don't, I think sometimes they forget that it's all a journey and you like what you were doing then you weren't, you didn't even think about what you, where you're at now. You know what I mean? Like no. it all evolves It all. Like, you know, now you're a successful business owner. You would have never probably thought that you would own. So like, no, no, YouTube was, it's still pretty weird now. Like yeah. when I bust out the camera in public and whatever. Um, but back then it was even more, uh, f I guess frowned upon and weird, yeah. you know, I'd, I started it when there weren't very many people doing it and there definitely weren't very many people having success with it financially. It was just this internet thing some people did. Yeah. And I would get, uh, I don't wanna say like picked on, but I'd get a lot of comments and stuff about it when I go to like parties and people like, oh, I'm actually like, cause I'd show, hey guys, I'm gonna show you my physique update and mm -hmm. it'd be in my room. Cause I'm like, hey, I got a camera, I got a room. Like, hey, here's my physique and we yeah. flex. Like yeah. it sounds weird. And my friends who were not only not into fitness, not into social media were like, that is very weird. Yeah. I'm gonna make fun of you for doing that and poke fun of you. Um, but it was just, it was something that I understood it. Mm -hmm. And I knew that kind of world because I had consumed the content before. So I knew that that was like normal, for people to do. So I'd never thought anything. I never thought it was strange. Cause I was like, I'm not making it for people like you. I'm making it for people like me who watch this type yeah. of content. No. Yeah. I remember. I mean, Chris is the one that introduced me to Christian and you. Um, we, I love, I liked, I honestly would watch you a lot during, uh, my cardio cause you were funny and it would get me out of my head. Cause I'm, I'm still funny. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you are still funny, but I like funny things, especially like when I've gone through my preps and things like that, I enjoy watching things that make me laugh. Cause it kind of gets me out of that headspace Cause mm -hmm. you're so like deep in it. But yeah, it's just crazy to see your journey that you started as a YouTuber. So now you have Sour Strips, Everford. Which one would you say is your favorite company? <laughs> out of out of those two? <laughs> and YouTubing, because that YouTubing itself. I still think, I still identify as a YouTuber. I still yeah. love YouTube. It's just, it's, it's kind of one of those things that's like, what makes something more of your interest? Is it because, is it the most successful of, does it bring you the most happiness? Does it, does something that brings you the most financial security and stability make you like it more because it's more stable and more realistic of a long-term type of thing? So there's a lot of like balances of what goes into what is your favorite. I thoroughly enjoy a lot of things. I would say that creating content and making people laugh and entertaining people is one of my favorite things to do. Mm -hmm. That's what I've always just loved. I was like class clown and I was a, in like, you know, high school, middle school, I got eighth grade superlative of like class clown. So I love being the funny guy. I love, you know, having kind of like having, I like having the attention on me. I like entertaining people. Yeah. And so I've been doing it for a long time and that's what brings me the most enjoyment I think is, you know, seen the comments on my YouTube videos and, and, and all of that stuff. But I, I really have gravitated a lot more towards the, the business side of things. And with Sour Strips and Everford, they both have had their successes at certain times and have their own frustrations. Um, but I think business is something that I've really started enjoying a lot more because it's something that when I was younger, I didn't think that I could be one of those people. I didn't think that I kind of knew I was, I knew I was destined for more. Like I was like, I shouldn't, I shouldn't be this dick desk job. I, I should be doing something like yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm a funny guy. Like I should be out doing funny things or something. Um, but I, so I knew I was kind of like going to do well or cause I was like, I had this mentality, but I never thought I'd be, you know, like these really successful people. Like I see, I was like, that's not me. I, I'm, I'm going to live a very normal average life. And every time that I hit these milestones and continue to grow everything I'm doing, it's very surreal and humbling to me because I'm, I still have this, uh, what would be it? Like, um, is it a limiting belief? No. What's the complex where you would like imposter syndrome? Yeah, like yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. like, th like this, this isn't me. I, yeah. I shouldn't, I shouldn't be doing this. Well, my company shouldn't be doing this. Well, this was some random idea I have. I'm just a guy who makes videos on the internet. Like there's people that work harder than me that sh should be having more success. And so you feel like I don't like deserve all of the success that I've, that I, that I've have mm -hmm. or that I've had. Um, but then I look back and I'm like, I, I have worked really hard yeah. to get where I'm at, but it's, I think because I always live in this 
doubt in my mind. It helps me push each each year and every, you yeah. know. I'm the same way. And it's crazy that you explain it because that's spot on me. I mean, even now with like the podcast, the podcast isn't the one that makes me the most money. It gives me no money, but it's the one that brings me a lot of happiness. Yeah. I personally like to share like a lot of my life because I know that like when I think about younger me, I'm like, I wish I would have had all this information out there. And so I love sharing like what goes through in my life and what I've learned throughout the years. But yeah, I think so too. I think I, I've fallen in love with the businesses and with me, I I was always like, okay, I'm destined for more. I didn't know how much more. Yeah. And the same, I was like, okay, I don't know if I'll ever be a millionaire, but I want more. And you do feel like you're this imposter sometimes when you get like all these, like when I got my home and all this stuff and I was like, oh shit, have I worked hard enough for this? It's like, sometimes you do question it, but then you look back and you're like, oh shit. Like when you actually look back at your journey, you're like, okay, yes, like I am worthy of this. But I think, I th honestly truly think a lot of us like influencers do deal with imposter syndrome. Because yeah, sometimes, it, you know. It, it's just tricky. And then, especially with being an influencer, because all of your, you know, when you, I guess when you have, let's say, poor performance at a, at a corporate job or something, it's really only you and that employer that is seeing, let's say, your poor performance, right? Um, but when you're an influencer and you're, you're graded by your metrics, when you put out a piece of content, when you put out a podcast, when you put out a video, an Instagram photo, the whole world can see how, how great or poorly you're doing. Yep. And that can definitely mess with a lot of people. Yep. And um, it's... It's a, it's a vanity metric metric and it, it, it sucks on a lot aspect and it's, but it does give you the dopamine when you, you get a lot of likes, but then yeah. you get upset when it doesn't get a lot of likes. But for, but even if it doesn't affect your income, you're still bothered by numbers on a screen. And there's people that even myself, it's like, oh, I'm going to hide the likes on that Instagram photo. Cause it didn't hit this minimum threshold. Yeah. Cause then everyone's going to look at my page and see that I have less likes on a photo and think that I'm shit and it's like yeah. no no yeah it's crazy how it like works it it is and uh, to be honest I, like i i got a therapist last year just to help me and like with my personal issues and stuff but it also came up like a lot of like my job has a lot of like it correlates because because of that like you do get a dopamine hit hit when you're like okay i got a ton of likes and when you don't get a ton of likes you feel like it's just it's shitty because it's what you said like the whole world gets to see everyone around you all your friends all the other influencers doing the same thing so they all have a comment about oh so and so is not doing that good because their likes aren't doing that good right so it affects you and it does affect like your self worth sometimes it's really hard to like take a step back and be like okay that d number doesn't define me and as an outsider like chris is like my support system so he's not directly affected by it because he's just like fuck it it's a number but it's my photo i'm directly you know affected by it and it is like it is like a brain fuck in the head youtube's a real bitch because it's um for for me for youtube it really comes down i mean there's a lot of factors but a lot of it comes down to um title and thumbnail and how well a video does because i like to think that i put very similar effort into every piece of content that I upload. And hopefully I'm always pushing the creativity of a, of a, of a YouTube video, but I could upload one and it could be on the YouTube rating system, a one out of 10, right? Mm -hmm. you, you know that rating yeah, system? Yeah, yeah. yeah. When you get a one out of 10, your whole day, you're like, I'm in a great mood. Let's go out to eat for lunch tonight. I, I if no, nothing can bring me down. And then you get, you upload a video and it gets a 10 out of 10, but you put the same amount of work into that video. But for some reason it just didn't get received as well. And it's a 10 out of 10 and my whole day is ruined. Like the yeah. whole day I'm just like depressed. I'm like, what's the point of even uploading videos? And with social media, it's very much like when you look at someone on social and you look like if you were to grade someone on how successful you think they are, you pretty much base that on are their numbers, YouTube videos, likes, whatever, really high or increasing all the time. And if you see someone that you could, you can tell because it's public that their views are going down on YouTube, that their likes are going down. You're like, damn, th that sucks. Like yeah. it's really, but you have no, like they could be making more money than ever. So it's like, what is influential success? Is it money or is it the likes? Because yeah. sometimes the likes don't correlate to how much money oh, someone no. can make. Yeah. And someone can be on the decline socially, but be on the incline financially. Yeah. But it's like, so what is success? Yeah is it, if someone gets way more views than you, but you have more financial success and stability and freedom than they do, are you more successful than them? At least from the eyes of a third party person who's just like judging someone from the outlook. I think success comes down to like happiness, yeah. but I'm saying from like someone looking oh, at two influencers. Yeah, yeah. 
Well, so. that's why Chris, I, I mean, he, he reminds me of that all the time. Cause he's like, you know, some of these influencers, you, you just never know. It's like what you said, they could be going downhill, but they're financially making more money than they ever have before. You just never know. And the more you get into it and the deeper you get into it. And when you start getting a little bit older and realizing that I care more about like having financial stability than how many likes my photos get, you start realizing it's not that serious. Yes. And then you look at a lot of people who are like desperate for likes, but they aren't like maximizing their potential to earn. Yeah. And you're like, you're doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong. Yeah. You tend but to learn it's, a little bit. I mean, they're, you know, vanity metrics, but sometimes I always say, I was like, I'd actually, this is, this might be the dumbest thing I've ever said. I think I would actually take a, a smaller amount of income from my social media and have a greater engagement as dumb, I, because I am just so obsessed with these vanity metrics, yeah. it messes my head. Like if you're the max, I'll, like if you went down 20% in your monthly revenue, but I'll increase your views 50%, I'd be like, all right. Serious? Yeah. I, it's, I'm, See, that's I'm weird. I, no, 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 I don't <laughs> think it's weird because I, I, I'm the same way some days. I'm like, okay, I want the engagement, I want the growth. But yeah. what helps me is that everyone has their measure of success, like you said, and like I, with my success, I've, you know, I've given a lot to my family. I've done a lot for myself. I'm not a materialistic person, but I do like materialistic things. I like my house and I like to have nice things. So what helps me is like, and this is all perception as well. When I see these people, influencers who have a ton of following, but then I, I see their lifestyle and I see that the numbers aren't correlating because their lifestyle isn't, I get, quote unquote, as grand as mine or like, yeah, I guess not as grand as mine. Then I'm like, okay, well, maybe I am doing something right because my I may not be getting all the likes and all the followers. Followers, I may not have a million followers, but I'm good financially. I'm living a good life, so yeah. I feel like that's what helps I, me. I, I think it's uh, it's an interesting kind of perspective on on uh, like viewing other people and and whatnot. Yeah. And I think I think it's for me. I think it's because I come from a a different starting point. I didn't start creating content because of the f potential financial success I could have from it. Yeah. The financial success in the businesses w were a byproduct of me just doing, creating content. Mm -hmm. And now I am doing well because of the content I create, but I'm still a content creator at heart. Um, I'm not only creating content to produce income for it. Yeah. You know, I was doing it before I made money. And even if, you know, I, retire and stuff, I'll probably still be carrying around the camera, you know, yeah. even if I'm getting, you know, lower views. And, um, it is interesting because there's a lot of different types of people. There's people who have crazy engagement and aren't spending a lot of money. There's people who have low engagement or spending a ton of money. Yeah. And, and you're like, am I, am I crap compared to them? Or are they flexing or are they, and it, it really makes you fully step back and be like, everyone's just dick measuring with everyone and everyone's worried about everyone else. And mm -hmm. sometimes it humbles me and it'd be like, you know, I don't think it actually matters. I think it's just worry about me. Who cares what other people are buying and whatever. And, um, cause I've gone through periods in my life too, where I see people where, who are buying a lot of flashy things and whatnot. And, um, and maybe I'm not right. Yeah. And I'm like, should I buy some flashy stuff to like prove that I can yeah. afford it? And that was something that I had this really big, weird part of my life uh, a couple years ago when I, I'm a big Jeep guy, right? Mm -hmm. And I sold my Jeep because I I literally told myself, I was like, Max, you are very, very successful. You've come a long way. You deserve to drive around in a very nice car. Mm -hmm. I was like, I, I I need, like, I should be driving around a nice car. I'm the owner of a multi-million dollar, but I, I need a nice car. Mm -hmm. Like the Jeep's not nice enough for me. So I yeah. bought this $135,000 Audi RS Q8. Mm -hmm. And I was like, look at me now, look at me, everyone. You know, I'm like driving this $100,000 car yeah. and I was driving it and I was like, I'm getting no happiness from this. Yeah. I, I, this, I don't care about this car. I'm only doing this because I think I'm wanting to show people that I can afford this easily. Yeah. And it really was this big eye opening experience for me. And then I ended up selling it and going back to like an older Jeep and, yeah. um, yeah, it was just I, weird. I think it's also the beginning. Cause I felt the same way when I, like, I, I guess mm, I took off a little bit more. I started making more money and I was the same. I'm like, well, should we buy nicer things? Because now we have the money. And I think as you mature and you, like as you, I think I've just matured and like the money's been there. So it's like, now I'm at the point in my life where it's like, well, I'll buy it if I want it, 
but it's not for anyone else but yeah. myself. And if we can afford it and we want it, we'll buy it. And if not, then there's no need for it. But I think in the beginning, it's like all this pressure. Okay, like, well, now I have money. Should I buy this or should I not buy that? Should I buy the name bag, name bag because so-and-so has it? And, you know, like you fall into it. And social media in general is a great thing, but it also sucks because it is like a comparison to your life every single day. But it's important to realize, okay, like just because you see that, if you can... Every day, if you wake up and you compare yourself in your life to someone else's, you're never going to be happy because yeah. you don't really ever know what's going on in their life. But I will say after, after uh, you know, realizing that tomorrow an asteroid could come and just <laughs> wreck the entire earth like it did the dinosaurs, if you believe in it, you know, uh, you're like, get the nice handbag, get Jazzy. The, yeah. <laughs> just no, just, get, just, just get, get the get name it. brand because... <laughs> As it's, coming, as it's rocketing towards Earth, you'd be like, I should have bought the fucking okay, name great. brand. I know. <laughs> All right. So if you don't mind sharing, what now is your primary source of income? Uh, I guess that's a loaded question because so I have a, a lot of different like holding company. Well, I'm not a lot. Of, I have a holding company yeah. that is called Dude Holdings named after my dog. And then what that company owns is basically Social Media Max, mm -hmm. Everford and Sour Strips. Um and it's like all my money, right? Mm -hmm. But I guess Sour Strips absolutely brings in the most income, period. Like yeah. by far, not even close to any of the other things. But um, how we have it structured is that I keep as much money as possible in the businesses because I do the social media thing. Um, I have it structured so that my social media world, that's you know money from YouTube, money from brand deals, money from sponsorships, things like that. Things that are like, I, I, me as a personality created the income for that. Um, that is where 90% of my, the money that I spend on personal items comes from it. It all comes from that. Yeah. Okay. It, the, the money that is pulled as like a management fee from Everford and sour strips into the holdings company is literally just to cover, uh, the, the shared rent of some of like alpha land to, to pay for, to help offset a little bit of some of the employees who are under dude holdings. But as far as the money for spending from things that I want to buy, it's all from social media. Okay. And so I'm very fortunate to have these streams. Yeah. Um, but I mean, the social media world is still very, very lucrative for me. So even if I, I could quit tomorrow, right. Mm -hmm. Um, it would be very dumb financially to do that because it is a very, very large stream yeah. of revenue. So you just take a really small amount of revenue from Everford and Sour Ships? Yeah. Side? So like, for example, uh, like every month, like $3,000 from Everford goes into Dude Holdings and I think like $9,000 from Sour Ships goes in. So call it um, $12,000 from Everford and Sour Ships goes into Dude Holdings. And actually, I need to increase it a little bit, but um, that goes into Dude Holdings, right? And then Dude Holdings pays me and a couple of my employees yeah. who work on all the companies, right? Yeah. Um, but the way that I have it structured is that all social media money goes into my holding company and that pays, basically my social media pays for two or three of my employees and my salary. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously I can pull money if I need to, but I try to just keep it that as much money as I possibly can keep into Everford and Sour Strips, I do. So I really don't pull. Is there a reason for that? Uh, just to, for cash flow purposes and to keep it healthy. And for me, I'm like a successful business is a cash heavy business mm -hmm. or a business that I don't need to worry about putting more money into. And it's just, yeah. like, I don't need it. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the money I'm making from social media can more than enough pay for anything I want. So yeah. it's like, I don't need to pull unless I want to go buy, you know, a, a cup, four Lambos tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Then I need to pull some money out of sour strips, but like, why am I going to do that? Right. Uh -huh. So, it just comes down to like what you want. And Sour Strips, you're the only owner. I'm the only owner of everything. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, how do the challenges of running Everford differ from the challenges you face with Sour Strips? Would you say one's harder than the other? They definitely both have their struggles and they both have their, you know, easy parts yeah. of it. I think in our world, the biggest difficulty of in the influencer culture world is that everyone has a clothing brand. So you're keeping, you're trying to compete. It's not, I use the word competing, but don't take that super literal, but you're competing yeah. with everyone around you because at the end of the day, you know, yeah, you can get really technical. Like, you know, when we make like a bomber jacket with really unique details, like maybe there's not a bunch of people that have like this exact style bomber jacket. There are definitely places you could go, but let's just say a very generic t-shirt. 
it, it's essentially the same, right? Like mm -hmm. th th this gym t-shirt, you know, this could say ever Ford or it could say gym shark. Yeah. They could be the same price, but people are going to associate with the brand of what the letters say for whatever reason. And that's what you're trying to compete towards. You're not really trying to, no one out here, I think is, I take that back. Christian is doing a lot of crazy things, but um, it's hard to like revolutionize clothing, right? Yeah. It, it comes down to branding and it comes down to most everything is comes down to branding and the culture and why people, you know, why can you buy a, you know, a $10 blank, you know, a uh, young or not young, uh, uh, like a $15 blank, uh, Los Angeles apparel t-shirt mm -hmm. and put your logo on it and sell it for 30, but Supreme can buy the exact same shirt, put their Supreme logo on it and sell it for a hundred. Yeah. It's the same shirt, but people, or you could buy it, a, a, you could buy it for blank for $10 at Walmart. You could buy it for 200 from Supreme. And there's people are gonna buy the same t-shirt because of the logo it has printed on it. So you're, you're competing with brands and the culture. Yeah. So that's definitely the biggest struggle is finding like, how do I get people to connect with my clothing brand? Um, and then of course with the candy, it's you're competing with these huge conglomerates, right? Mm -hmm. But I think at the end of the day, everything comes down to the brand. It, yeah. it comes down to why do people want to be associated with your product? Why do they want to have your product? Can they share it on there? Do they feel like a, a part of something when they share it? Mm -hmm. Do they feel some type of way when they wear it, when they eat it, when they have it, when it's in their car? You know, that's what you're, you're trying to in, invoke evoke, invoke, mm. uh, emotion out of people for some, yeah. some way. So, um, there's struggles for, for each. So I'd say at the moment, sour ships probably because it's so much larger, has larger scale problems than ever forward. Um, ever forward has kind of taken the back seat a little bit because of the time that it takes to grow sour strips. Mm. But did you ever think sour ships is going to be as big as it is now? I think everyone thinks that they want it to Everything, everyone f hopes that one day their company is going to be at this crazy yeah. number, whatever that number is. Right. Yeah. But you just, you assume that that's going to happen eventually. And I hoped that sour strips would have this great success, but having the path of growth that it has in three years has definitely been something that I can't even wrap my head around. Yeah. And what's crazy is it's like only, I mean, every month is just growing and growing. It hasn't slowed down. It hasn't stopped. It, it's just continuing this, this upward trajectory, which is crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy to see. I mean, it's, it's, it's one of those things I look at it. I'm like, oh, this isn't fair. Like this was some random idea that I had. Yeah. There's no way it should be working this much. Like, no, but that's <laughs> what you just talked about. It's not the, I mean, I'm sure people love the candy. Cause to be honest, I'm not a big sour person. The only sour candy that I like is sour Skittles. So when I tried sour strips, I was like, okay, this shit's good. Like it's good. Right. Yeah. But I think you have to give yourself a little bit more credit because it's what you just talked about. You've built a brand, yes. you've built something people, I mean, people love you, they love your personality, so they wanna support you. So when they hold a bag of sour strips, they feel like they're, they're holding a part of you, you know? Yeah. So you, I know it's like, you're like, okay, it's been quick, but you've allowed that to grow because of the brand that you've built, you know? Yeah, I guess it's, it's just, it's very surreal to, look back. And again, when I mentioned earlier about how was I saying like, Oh, I can't be one of those people. I can't be one of those yeah. crazy success, successful people in life. That's kind of like what I always thought with, um, with some of the businesses. I mean, look at ever forward, I, you know, in times have changed. So that's probably impacted things greatly, but you know, I spent five years growing ever forward and to get it to its peak in 2019 was like the, our best year in sales. And that was me five years. I mean, putting, all of my effort into that. They, yeah. It wasn't like a buy, it wasn't like, oh, let me worry about, let me do some clothing every now and then. It was like every day, all day, I think about the clothing, I'm working on, I'm talking to manufacturers, I'm design, here's new items, here's what do you guys want, launches. I mean, my whole mind was into it and that was five years. And now three years into Sour Strips, I'm doing more a month than whatever Ford did in its peak year. Yeah. I mean, it's, so it's almost like, yeah. it's just what the heck? Hell. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's like, maybe it's just a type of business, man. I'm like, maybe I was yeah. never meant to build a huge clothing company. Yeah. Like, you know, I don't want to underplay it. It was doing great, but it, you know, it's a blip on the radar compared to what Sour Strips is doing. Yeah. It's just crazy to see. You never know. You just never know. I don't know. All right. Let's talk a little bit about your influential side. Um, do you, I know you just talked about that. You do feel pressure as a so social media influencer. So are you the type of person that like goes in and reads every comment? I would say in the first 24 hours on a YouTube video, mm -hmm. I, I, I would say I see 
every comment. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, definitely that day. Like, cause I usually upload, you know, 9 AM or something or before noon. So definitely before I go to bed, I have read 99% of the comments. Do you have like a, I mean, you kind of have to have like a fuck it personality though to be able to sleep if you do it. Like, I mean, there's definitely comments that I read that uh-huh. I'm, that I'm get really sarcastic back or I, I'm, I'm very like snappy with some of the, if people say some dumb shit, I'm just like, this is like, you're overthinking this. You're thinking way too deep yeah. into this or I'll joke about something and people think I'm super deep about it. I'm like, no, um, I, I think I have a really good community, but I think if, I think if you, one side of me has always been like, you know, what if I just upload content and just ignore the comments? Cause it, let's say that gets my mental, but then I'm almost like, and now like, what's the point? But I'm, it's like, I'm, I'd make a video and just throw it out in the world and never know what it does. If people enjoyed it, what they liked about it. And it's like, I don't like that. It, yeah. It's I, I want to be involved in the content. I want to see what people like. I want to see what people enjoyed, what people didn't like. Um, so I think having the community is a big part of it. Yeah. If you just, if you were like, Hey, I'm going to turn off the, the views. So you couldn't see the views, couldn't see the likes, no comments on it. It's almost like, what's the point? Yeah. That's like, what's true. the point? Unless it was an instructional video. What's the point then? Yeah. I mean, I read my comments on Instagram and, but I, the only thing I don't do is I don't read the comments on the provocative TikTok. I just don't do it. TikTok is yeah. because I cannot, because people don't know who you are. Yeah. No, and no, no. it like gets, I mean, it, people say the craziest shit and like, I mean, the comments that they make sometimes, like not just about the podcast, about me and stuff. I'm just like, okay, I can't read this right now because even though I, Chris would say I don't have like too much of a fucking personality. I try to have like a fucking personality. I would say on a scale of one to 10, it's probably like a six and a half, seven. Yeah. But with the podcast, I just feel like, cause some of the videos, thankfully, you know, I'm grateful that they do blow up because yeah. it gets more engagement and more eyes on the podcast. But some of these people are just savage as fuck. I think short form content that blows up, which is pretty common. Yeah. Um, is the comment section is pretty ridiculous, whether it be on YouTube shorts, Insta- uh, in Instagram reels, TikTok, whatever. It's like the short form is like the other side of the social media world. Yeah. It's kind of like when you go on Facebook forever and like you, there's, you know, some viral post and there's just thousands of comments of, people and like I'm not someone who when I see something ridiculous I'm not like I need to I need to yeah. I, need, I need to state my opinion about this I've just yeah. never been that type of person Dang, so it's same. strange to me sometimes like I want people to interact with me but like when people comment on a video or a person they've never seen in their entire life and it has nothing to do with them at all and it's just like a random person topic the fact that people want to be so opinionated is a different type of person yes you know it's it'd be different if it was like your community commenting yeah, on it, yeah. but people have no idea who you are. That just what you said enrages them to it's the point. Crazy. Where it's crazy. It's wild. Uh, Cause I'm the same way. I, I don't think I ever comment on anyone unless I know them. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like I just don't, there's no need for me. Like, and uh, sometimes like, it's like, I'm sure you do it. You go on TikTok and this video went viral and then I'll read the comments and in my head I already know what people are saying. And I'm like, man, these people have no idea who this person is. The comments are the best part sometimes. And they're hilarious you, sometimes. Because as, as soon as you see a ridiculous video, you're like, you're, I need to see what the comments Yeah, you're like, oh shit. It already <laughs> went in your head like that they said this. But it's just crazy. So that's the one thing that I just like, I don't like to look at because if not, then I'm just like, it just, for me, it ruins my day. Or I'm like constantly thinking about it or I'm trying to like, like, I don't know. I'm like, okay, well, it, they didn't take it like this. And I'm trying to explain myself to Chris. And he's like, you have you don't have to explain yourself to me. It's like, I already know what you meant to say, but it's just, you just gotta, you just gotta let it go. I, like, I think, especially for like short form for me, I, I don't make any short form content. Yeah, I have someone at the moment that chops up my vlogs that puts them out, but they don't, they rarely ever pop off. Yeah, the podcast ones do a little bit, but generally like when I read comments, I can immediately tell on a comment if that person has no idea who I am. Yeah. Because I'm like, you wouldn't be saying this if, if you if have you seen knew. any of my other content yeah. because you know, how sarcastic I am, you know, my jokes, you know, my type of personality, you know, my humor. Um, so most of those weird comments are people who that's like the first time they've ever experienced this person yeah. and they're just opinionated people and you know, you just gotta, love them or hate them. Yeah. Okay. Is there one person or several people who you would say have influenced you the most in your business decisions? Christian. Christian? Yeah. Oh, I mean, he, 
it, it's funny, like throughout my many years, I, I, I definitely pay a lot of respect to Christian in terms of his influence and his, um, not only what he's built that has allowed me to flourish, um, but also just him directly aiding my growth. Mm-hmm. So I owe a, I, I truly would not be where I'm at today if it wasn't for him and yeah. his, what he's built, who he is, his influence. Um, so I definitely, uh, uh credit him for a, a ton. Um, I think it's just, I love surrounding myself with people who are really pushing more. And that was a big reason why I moved to Texas was I loved, I loved Virginia, I loved being around my family. I loved all my friends, but not in a negative way. It's like all my friends weren't in the same mindset that I was. They were working the nine to five job. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. It was just I knew that I wanted to be surrounded by people who were doing the same thing I was that wanted this entrepreneurial journey that wanted that, that push. And, um, Christian is absolutely that comes to the top of my list, which is for most people, um, because of just his ability to dream so big and to not be scared. And he's pushed me to do things that I normally wouldn't do. Even my current sour strips warehouse, which is 15,000 square feet, which after this podcast, I'm going to look at some that are like 61,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. But what's funny is moving into that 15, we didn't need that much space at the time. I was looking at a warehouse that was like 7,000 square feet mm-hmm. and, I, and that would have been perfect. But Christian was like, you should go bigger. And I was like, I don't need it right now. He's like, you should go bigger. I was like, yeah, but it's gonna be like, so like a lot more money money, and like, we don't need all that space right now. And like, I think we can make the 7,000 work. He's like, you should go bigger. And he just kept like, yeah. you, 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 you absolutely need to think bigger, go bigger. And I trusted him and I believed him. And I was like, okay, well, I, I, I think I should. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll go for it. And I, we're like busting the seams of that one now. And yeah. it's like, if I had gone with the smaller one, I would have yeah. screwed yeah. like oh, t- t- six months in. Yeah. So um, I think it's a very unique type of person that ha- that can have that, like, Effect. I can't yeah. fail. Mm-hmm. I'm going to dream bigger than anyone thought. People are going to doubt my ability. And it's not someone like I am. I, I'm not the same type of personality he is where, you know, look at Alpha Land. People thought he was crazy. People thought he was going to like literally going in, insane. People thought he was like, this is way too big. Oh my God, you're going to fail. Look how much money this is. It's never going to succeed like you thought. You're going to take all this this break off of YouTube and you're going to lose all your athlete followers because that's what they want is videos. I mean, your company's going to fail. And he just, he's like, nah, like yeah. I'll do it. I know. And you'll see. And like, he did it. He did it. Every time he does it. Yeah. And that's the people you need to surround yourself with. There's a lot of aspects about certain people's uh, lifestyle choices and um, business choices that I don't agree with, Mm -hmm. but because I know I'm not exactly like them. I'm not exactly like Christian, but I can aspire to have some attributes that he has that I admire. Yeah, I agree. I mean, Christian's one of the guys that, to be honest, he changed my life. I tell him all the time. And like, even though now I'm not, you know, part of Alpha Lee, I built a good friendship with him. And anytime I cross anyone and I get that question Like I owe everything to Christian because of what he's built, because, you know, I'm the same with you. I think, did you move before I did or I moved before you did? Uh, Moved 2018, 2018. Yeah. Yeah, 18. Cause I moved September, but you moved, I, you moved that summer. I've been here for four years. Yeah. So I think a little bit more ahead of me, like a few months, but yeah, I mean, because of what he builds, I, you know, have the growth. I had the growth that I have and like being around him has just like, it's just different being around people with his mindset. It's just, and it's crazy to witness like everything. Cause even like as someone who witnessed him going through what he went through, through Alpha Land, and like, I'm not as close to him as you are. You were probably dealing with him daily, multiple times a day. I was only dealing with him, like not dealing with him, but around him like a few times a week. And it was just to see the, like the stress and everything it was taking out of him to build that. But he was still like, I'm going to do it. Well, I mean, you look at, you look at someone like that and you look at the, the stress and the sleeplessness and the, mm-hmm. and the wear and tear it's taken on them. You're like, I don't want that. Yeah. But then you see the success and the things that he can do and the freedom. You're like, I want uh, that. that yeah. But it, it's, it's an exa- example of like, mm-hmm. I don't want to put in that amount of crazy stress, mm-hmm. but I want this amount of success. Yeah. And it's, you see why people are successful and, and or more successful than others because yeah. they are willing to do those, those extra mm-hmm. steps. But you have to, you have to ask yourself, does that align with what you want in life? Yeah. Christian's someone that he'll, you know, until his fingers are bleeding, he's going to keep working. Whereas maybe I'm someone who has a, I'm, I'm, I'm proud and I'm satisfied. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy where I'm at. And my happiness doesn't look like, you know, working 25 hours, 25 hours a day. And 
will that limit my success? Yes, mm -hmm. but it's just different strokes for different folks and yeah. you have to accept it, understand it, acknowledge it, appreciate it. But you know, at the end of the day, everyone's different. Yeah. So do you have a purpose, a reason what, why you do what you do every single uh, day? Now it's to uh, provide a great future for, you know, myself, my girlfriend, my, my dog, my family. Um, I, I'm definitely past the point in my life where I care a lot about myself. Like, yeah, I want to build a dream home in a couple of years, but other than that, I've, I really just, I, I just want to make sure that whoever's around me, my friends, my family, whatever, I want to know that I, I've worked very hard so that when I get to a point, if I can as help and assist the people around you. And I think there's, what's the point of being successful if you can't let other people, let other people kind of like reap the benefit of your success. I 100% agree. I, I don't think everyone needs to do the same thing you do to benefit. Like, it's yeah. not like, hey, only people who can go hang out with me on this like trip is only people who are at my level of success. It's mm -hmm. like, no, that's not what I want. I want to be able to like, hey, my family, let's all go on a vacation, I'll pay for it, don't worry about it. Like, yeah. hey, I wanna go somewhere, I know everyone can't afford it, Let, let's let's do it. Hey, you know, um, like it, even like my, my family, for, like for Christmas, I'm like, hey, we should do it in Texas, I'll, I'll bring everyone to Texas that yeah. like, just like, don't worry about that. Don't worry about the cost of that. Like, let me take care of you. Um, and you know, helping my family when I can is, is great. Mm -hmm. And now it's now that I'm newly in a relationship, it's something that I'm very, I'm a very traditional man mm -hmm. in terms of providing for, you know, his partner. And mm -hmm. I, that's something that I really want to do and be the best partner that I can and provide, you know, what t later in life, like, I want to give Taylor the the dream life, the dream house, and I want to work hard so that yeah. she has that. And it's not for any reason besides like I want other everyone around me to have the benefit of my success. Yeah, I love that. I'm the same way. That's I mean, I think in, in the beginning you get like when you're younger, you're like, okay, yeah, like I want the nice things. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I think the, the older I've gotten, the more mature. And even before I wanted to take care of my family, but now like that's my, my, that's my purpose. Like I wake up every day because I want to be successful for my friends, for my family, for ex the exact same reasons you mentioned, because I feel like that's where true happiness is being able to take care of others and have a good time. And I feel like, you know, time isn't guaranteed. It's like what you said, we could die tomorrow. We could die in an hour, you know, but I want to make sure that the people around me were taken care of and felt loved by me. So. And I, I think it's, I think, like whenever someone asks me about whether it be who motivates you or, mm -hmm. you know, whenever I mention Christian, for example, and a lot of people mention Christian, um, I think it's a really cool thing that he can like know that he's had this impact on a lot of people and change people's lives. He doesn't do it so he can do that, but it's a byproduct. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really cool to work really hard and do things that indirectly without you trying have impacted a lot of other people around you. Yeah. So the people that work for me, um, they're not going to work for me forever. And it's cool that like one day they're going to go to the next step and follow their dreams and do what they want to do. And I was this little, you know, leapfrog pad that like yeah. they did for a little bit, they learned some things and that helped them go to this new thing. You know, it's like with, with Christian is uh, if, if Christian never picked up a camera, I wouldn't be in Texas. I wouldn't have sour strips, period. Yeah. Like it wouldn't happen. Yeah. Like it wouldn't have happened. And uh, I think I'm a big believer in like the, the butterfly effect. You know, everything has like this chain reaction yeah. of affects Same. everything else. And it's um, it's cool. And I want, I want to be like that for other people. I want to be like, hey, not like because you know me, you're successful, but like anything that I've done that has impacted someone to help improve their life, that's really cool. Yeah. And I think a lot of people around me have, had that impact on me and I want to have that impact on other people. I love that. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about your mental health. You said you, you said you kind of, you know, correlate your YouTube stuff as like anxiety and depression, but would you say there are things that you do for your mental health or would you say you do have anxiety? I say, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know what it like in my, with, like, I feel like there's been times when I've been anxious. Mm -hmm. Um, but I don't know, like, is it a physical trait that you're like, it's happening, my anxiety, yeah. like it's yeah. like, it's like, you know, when you get punched in the arm, your arm hurts, right? Yeah. Like, so is it, is there like something that you feel or is it just like a, an embodiment and a, in a, a feeling that you represent with being awkward in a situation or not want to be there? I think there was one time during recently at one of, I think it was like the Chris Bum said 
opening at Alpha Land. Chris Bum said was there, whatever. And I was there with my buddy David, um, had a beast. And it was the first time ever. And I've been to a lot of expos and I've met a lot of people, but that was the first time that like everywhere I turned, like I couldn't do anything with like someone like talking to me, like, like, like wanting to talk to me and take yeah. a picture and like everywhere I turned, I couldn't move and I couldn't talk. And that was the first time I told David, I was like, I, was like, Dude, I need to get out of here. Like I, yeah. I like, I, I feel very uncomfortable and I've never felt like that. I've yeah. never, I'm usually very welcoming to people and I want to meet people and, you know, thank them for watching the content. But it was like, I felt anxious because it's like, I couldn't move. I couldn't go anywhere. I couldn't, yeah. every time I stopped talking to one person, I'd turn and walk two feet and I talked to someone else. And like, I just got overwhelmed and, yeah. I, and it's weird because I'm like, Hey, Max, you should want to talk to everyone. And I did, but I just, it was this feeling I couldn't describe where I was like, I, I need to get out of here. Like that I can't. Like a little bit like a panic attack. Maybe, maybe that that's a, a panic. That was panic a, that's attack. a panic attack. But I, that's, I mean, 100% normal in you, your circumstances. You know what it is? I think I've never, with the whole, we'll say the three things like depression, anxiety, panic attack. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm someone, and maybe people can relate is, I feel like I've never wanted to classify those attributes to me because I'm like, I'm someone like, I don't get depressed. I don't get anxiety. I don't get panic attacks. No, 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 I'm, I'm strong. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and literally, I, I just I maybe associated with weakness and it's not, and it's not, but I just felt like I'm weak if I show weakness Yeah. and it's weird because I'm very showing, yeah. you know, uh, emotions on my YouTube channel. But when it terms to, it comes with like things where people are just like, get over it, yeah. calm down, Yeah. stop being sad. Like yeah. it's, like I, I'm like no, that I don't, that can't happen to me. Yeah. I'm strong. Yeah, no, I mean we just talked about it last week uh, with Tracy Cortez because we talked about mental health, and I'm the same way. I mean, it, for a long time, like I have a little bit of anxiety, and I do get panic attacks, especially when I get like very overwhelmed. Like I'll go a period of time where like I'll work and work, and I put my head down, and I do a ton. I'm one of those people that puts a lot on my plate. I enjoy it. Do I stress out? Yes, but I like having multiple things on my plate at once. But what will happen is by the end of the week or by the end of the month or whatever out of nowhere, I'll get like this crazy panic attack. And I don't like to really talk about it because especially what we just talked about YouTube, if some like on our social media, if someone sees that they're like, oh, well, she's fucking weak. She might have something going on with her. She's not as strong as she's portrays to be. There's definitely days, there's definitely days and it happens I'd say frequently, like mm -hmm. I don't know, maybe not once a week, but maybe once or twice a month that there's absolutely days where I'll be even at the office or I'll go drive an errand and I'm just, I'm like, all I want to do is go home and do like, not do nothing cause I'm so overworked, but I'm just like, I feel like I need to shut down. Like yeah. I need to shut yeah. off. And it's, it's not an overworking thing in my head. It's not like, oh my God, there's this huge project and I've been up for, you know, I get plenty of sleep, mm -hmm. you know, I get, I, I, I eat, I rest, I get seven, eight hours every night. Yeah. I'm not someone who stays up every night, um, you know, grinding, um, but there's, plenty of days each month that I just feel like I want to shut off the world like that day, yeah. but I kind of just keep it inside yeah. and uh, don't ever mention it to anyone because I'm just like stopping weak. Yeah. Stop. No, you can't, you can't in the middle of the day, just take a, take a self, yeah. what do they call it? A self care day yeah, or something of like, if I go home and I lay down or something in the middle of the day, I'm, I'm being lazy. I'm not working. I'm not showing a good, um, representation for my employees. I, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm showing weakness. Mm -hmm. How, how dare I go relax while they're working. And that's what I think about. And I'm like, all right, go back in. But the whole day I'm just like, I, I don't want to be here. Yeah. Like it's weird. I think it's normal. I mean, I have my days like that too. And it's hard though. Like you feel guilt by doing that. And like, I would say like Chris and I have a good relationship and he's he, I would say, is like my business manager. So when I have my days, and especially as being a female, sometimes it's harder because you have that time of the month where it's like, I create content based on the way that I look. So if I have the time of the month that I can't create the fucking content that I need to make, then it's like even more depressing because you're like, fuck, I feel like shit. Why do I feel like I have to make this content and you want to take like some time to rest. And it's like, then I'm over here like apologizing to him. I'm like, fuck, I didn't meet the deadline of this or whatever. I needed to do this. And he's like, calm down. You're human. Like, you're going through what you're going through. It's just, it's harder. I will say a little bit for females in this, in the influencer world, but I do have a lot of days like that where like, sometimes it's not just because I had a lot. It's just some days you're just like, I just need to take a breather and like zone out the rest of the world. And I, I feel like that when I have more frequent days like that, I'm like, okay, it's time for vacation. 
Yeah, I just. <laughs> that's, I, that's when I'm like, I need to go to Tulum, sit by a beach, drink a margarita, turn on my phone on Do Not Disturb, and just be there for a few days. I I would love to do that on a regular basis. <sighs> I, I guess, yeah, the whole showing weakness thing is something that I struggle with because yeah. I never want to think I'm showing weakness. Yeah. And then also, I mean, it's a little bit different now because there's a lot of people that rely on me for their income, um, employees where they're in the office. So if I'm not there, it, like if I'm not in the office, I feel like everyone else is like, Max isn't working. Ma yeah. uh, we're working, but Max isn't working. So yeah. like, and you know, it, it, times are different now, but even before I maybe had a bunch of people, it's funny, you, you, I never want to take days off. I never want to, to, to relax, whatever, because like, I think it's showing weakness, but sometimes you're like, like what, who cares? Like who yeah, cares? Who cares? Like if yeah. it's not gonna, I can financially take time off. It's not gonna, you know, yeah. I'm my own, my own boss. I can do whatever. And you just, you had this, like, I guess it's that, uh, like an imposter thing. You're like, it yeah. can't be me. It can't be me. Like I, I can't be that person. I can't be the, everyone else has days off. Not me. I'm Max, yeah. I'm max tuning, you know? Yeah. I mean, I think I do find that most with men too. They're just like scared to show that sign of weakness. Yeah. We're just, a bunch of bitches. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. So, uh, I know in some of your past, if not most past YouTube videos, you joked around a lot about finding love. Do you feel like you have found love now? Heck yeah, I have. Yeah, yeah. And her tell. name is Taylor Kessler, I, and it, she's the love of my life. Oh, I love that. And she's beautiful. She's a model. She does pageants. Does she still do pageants now? She, she. I wouldn't say she does pageants. She probably would do them if like presented. She still does a lot of modeling on a weekly basis, whether it be, um, with brands that we know, or she goes to Dallas frequently, probably two or three times a month, um, to do shoots for a lot of, uh, Texas based companies. She'll do, a, I've gone and had the great opportunity to see her to kind of do her thing and walk in some, some shows and some, um, it's like fashion shows, yeah. which is just cool seeing her and, and her element. So she's still absolutely keeps up with that. She keeps up with the pageant world, mm -hmm. which is its own kind of like whirlwind of, yeah. drama and all this kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. But um, yes, I did I did think for a very, very long time that I would just be like the fun uncle, single guy. And then I've, I've you hear it all the time of when people are saying like, oh, I just can't find the right person. And everyone's, everyone always says like, it'll, when it happens, it'll just happen one day. Like you'll just meet him. And I would always be like, where? What yeah. am I going to like walk around the grocery store and someone's going to bump into me? I was like, I do the same four things every day. Like, do I need to go to the park and meet people? I was like, who am I going to meet ever? Yeah. And it just took seven years. It, it took, took seven or eight years. And it was just, it just happened. What it, mistakes do you feel like you were making in the past? Were you actually looking for love or were you just kind of like fucking around? I guess, I mean, I definitely went through in my twenties, like the fun single phase. Yeah. And I was like, oh, you know, I can why do I need to get in a relationship? I can have all the fun and none of the stresses. I haven't been in an argument in years. I would yeah. hear all my friends getting in arguments in their relationships. I'd be like, I literally have not gotten into an, an argument with a girl in years, yeah. years and years. And I was like, this is great. Cause I remember, I mean, I would like my last arguments were like when I was like in high school and college. So that's even more immature, petty mm -hmm. arguments. Right. Um, but I just, I think I was someone that when I would meet someone, and she could have, let's say, let's say the physical attributes are like, you know, she's super attractive. She's, you know, beautiful and we could get along, but I believe it's a Kanye song that he says in a lyric that says like, he's, he said, I'm so good at finding what I don't like the most. Mm. And I kind of like always did that. It'd be, I mean, it'd be like, oh, she has bangs. I don't like bangs. <laughs> oh like she's God. great at everything, but she like, she has bangs. but like her, but she, I, I don't know what it would be like the dumbest thing. It'd be yeah. like, Oh, she drives a car and I like SUVs. It'd be like, I would look for stupid things to be like, that's why I can't, that's why she's doesn't yeah. check every literal box. And it's yeah. so stupid and it's so dumb. when I think back to it, but I don't know. I just, I would put up these walls yeah, and I would just be like, I'm never gonna let someone break down these walls because I, I never, if I, I can't get hurt, if I never let anyone get close to me, Yeah, that was like my mindset. So what changed with Taylor? the right person you, yeah. you meet the right person and you, you just, you just click. I mean, Taylor and I just, she was in like relationships for a while before that. So she had never been like around my group. It wasn't like we knew each other really. I like knew of her cause she shot with um, Heidi with buff bunny. So I like had seen her on some pages and I, I think 
I had been introduced to her for 30 seconds one time. And that was like, it, it was like, Hey, this is Taylor is max. All right, bye. Like, yeah. and we were off. I didn't think anything of her. It was just more like, Oh, that's an attractive girl that shoots for, for a buff bunny. And then we just, she happened to come out one evening or two evenings, really uh, like around Halloween uh, mm -hmm. two years ago. Uh, so it's, it's been a little over a year since we started dating and she just happened to be out and we got along. We went on a first date and from that date, we spent four hours at Escalante's. So first day we, we spent four hours and we just got along mm -hmm. and I've, I've never been on a date that long. Like maybe you go somewhere and you go some other places, but it was like, we sat at a restaurant for four hours and talked, never done that before with anyone. We just connected. And then from, I literally, I think it was that day or the next day, I, I deleted all my, like my, my dating apps. I was like, this is the girl, like, this is the one. And from that day, from going on the first day with her, mm -hmm. I never flirted with another girl. I never talked to another girl. I never went on a date with another girl. I mean, I was just like, this is her. This is her. I mean, we, we the first date we went on, we went on like, we hung out three or four more times that, that, that same week. And it was just, it was like little things that other girls maybe didn't do. It was like on our third date, it was, we like went to Escalante's and the second date, she's like, she's like, oh, you can choose. I was like, okay, why don't we just like, you know, come over, like watch a movie or something, mm -hmm. watch that. And then I was like, okay, you pick the third date. And her idea was, she's like, why don't we take you and your, like, let's go, like, let's take your dog and like, let's go to the Galveston. Let's drive an yeah. hour and a half. And I was like, what? Like, yeah. you want to go on like a little day trip with me and like yeah. go do some like that? I was like, that's, I've never, that's weird. Yeah. That's, I've never done that. Yeah. And it was just these little things. And uh, yeah, we're like best friends. We get along. We don't argue. And it's just, I've never lived with a girl ever. Mm -hmm. She lives with you now? She lives with me after eight months. Okay. I asked her moved in. So I never lived with a girl. Get, get along great. And as of, we just celebrated our 13 months uh -huh. in, uh, dating. No, 15 months, 15 months. And this is the longest relationship I've ever been in. That's so crazy. I just want to clap yeah, for you. Wow. That's all, I mean, I see Woo. it through social media. Like, I mean, you guys just look really good together and I know she makes you happy and you can just tell. And I honestly, I think like just the vibe you give off. I, I was telling Chris, I was like, Max is going to marry this girl. It's funny though, because whenever I talk about her on my channel or whatever, you get the couple comments that are like, this guy's a simp. This guy is like, oh just God. like, this is the first, the first girl that like shows him attention that now he's like in love. I was like, no, it's like, listen up you children. Yeah. When you find the, the, the person of your dreams, mm -hmm. I was like, it just clicks and yeah. you get along and like there's, it's not complicated. Yep. And I think it's like before, before my biggest problem with people of the opposite sex for me was that there was always this, I think they're probably talking to other people. I think they're probably mm -hmm. still flirting with other people. And from just the first, like after the first like two dates, it was, I just never, it was like, I know that she is into me. I am into her. Mm -hmm. We are, we're not talking to other people. We're not flirting with other people. And what's great too is like before that, I'm, you know, I'm, I don't want to make myself sound super cool, but I on a regular basis would have flirtatious DMs come in. Yeah. And since the day that Taylor and I I guess we'll may not started dating because I never like publicly said I was with someone, but as soon as I announced it, never have I, I haven't gotten one single flirtatious DM, nothing that I, nothing. Yeah. And it's like, people like respect my relationship and I love that. And it's That's like, awesome. it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's cool. And I'm just, I'm super happy. Mm -hmm. And for a while I didn't think I was like, Oh, you don't have to be with you know one person and I don't have to get married, whatever. Yeah. And, um, she's definitely changed my views on all that. Um, I know that you said that you are a traditional guy. So when you were looking for someone, were you someone who was like, okay, I want her to have her own thing and her own businesses. I want her to be as successful at me, as me. Or were you someone who's like, I don't care. I, I, I'll provide for her. Um, I definitely don't think I, I don't know. I don't, I don't use this verbiage, but there's like a, a there's like a, a common thing that for the most part, like, how much money a girl makes has no impact on a guy's thoughts. Like, I don't care how much money you make, whether you make more money than me, less money than me, no money. I don't care because I can provide, I don't need, I don't need your money. Yeah. And so that really wasn't a thing. I, I never, a big no, no for me was I didn't want someone who was a, uh, real, like a big social media influencer okay. because I already know how annoying it is when I'm out like, Hey guys, we're eating this chicken sandwich right here. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to be like, 
all right, all right, you can, you can film me. Yeah. It, it just, I was like, I, it's already annoying enough that mm -hmm. someone has to be this YouTube person. Like, I don't want someone who's in that. And I don't know if that's like selfish, like, oh, no, someone else knows no, how I to do agree. it. I, what's funny I don't is, want Chris to be an influencer. Well, yeah. What's funny is now now to Taylor, I'm like, I think you should start a, like a, be a beauty little like, get ready with me <laughs> thing. I was like, I'll help you set it up. So maybe it's yeah. like, I just need to find someone to do that. But no, I, I think I think there's a lot. It's not like I looked at Taylor up and down and was like, all right, let me like, let me check, see if she checks all the boxes. Yeah. It was just, there are a lot of, things about her that I am like, I, I'm very glad that, she, you know, um, super close with her family. Family lives here. Um, I, she's very, very traditional in her thoughts. She, uh, you know, she wants kids, wants marriage. And I was kind of like on the fence about those things. And I, but I've, we've talked about them a lot and I understand her side of things and I'm open to those. It, it, I was more like fine if I didn't do those, but it wasn't like I'm anti, it was just, if I don't get married, whatever, if I don't have kids, whatever. Yeah. But if I find someone who wants those things, I'm also like, okay, we can do that. Yeah. Um, but no, I think she checks all the boxes. I didn't even know were there. And yeah. you know, I, She's great. Yeah, just, no, I can tell. Just great. She's beautiful, guys, and yeah, she's just, you, you can know, tell she has a very, I mean, I think I've only said hi to her once or twice, but you can tell she has a very sweet personality, very humble personality. Well, that, the, but, uh, this is the whole clip just about Taylor here, but yeah. like, it. what's the most fascinating thing about her is she, so I have this friend, Daryl, who my friend, Daryl, the dentist. Yeah, yeah, He's I know, someone Darryl. who's been yeah. since Virginia days, yeah. and he's always been someone that I've joked about that I'm like, you can, like, I'm someone who I don't really, if I go to like a party or something and a bunch of people I don't know, I'm like, I don't want to talk to a bunch of people, but like Daryl's, like, you can put him in, in any group, anywhere, in any environment, and everyone's going to love him and want to be best friends with him. And he's going to be like ripping shots with him by the end of the night. And I'm not someone like that. Yeah. Taylor is that same way. Like any person, any friend that I've introduced Taylor to, they're like, she just gets along with them, is super friendly mm -hmm. and like genuinely like wants to be friends with them. And so just her ability to like, connect with all of my friends has been so great. And, um, she's just, I was, was going to say something. Uh, what were you just saying? Just that she's genuine and humble. Yeah. No. Oh, oh, okay. So, so yeah, she gets along with everyone. Uh -huh. But what's funny is when we first started dating and I brought her, I think it was to the new year's alpha land mm -hmm. party that had, we had just started dating like a month before that. And I had so many people that come up, come up to me and they're like, Max, Taylor is so cool and so gorgeous. I don't know how you pulled that off. I like, it was almost like I had so many comments that were like, Max, I don't know how you possibly got her. Yeah. It was like, she's out of my league, yeah. all this stuff. And I'm like, damn, what'd you guys like? What'd you guys think I was going to get or yeah. something? But I got like compliments that I was able to get a very attractive, cool girl. I was yeah. like, damn, y'all had low expectations of what yeah. like the girl is going to be with. But uh, now nah, she's, yeah, I'll I'll get out of my uh my my simpy mode, but no, no she, I love it. I she's want, great. I she's to great. Hear that. Okay, we're about to close off because I know you have somewhere to be, but a little fun ones. Okay, have you ever encountered encountered any female stalkers? Because you were so single for a while. No, not I wouldn't say female stalkers. I've definitely encountered a lot of. I've definitely encountered out a lot of girls that I've been when I'd be at the club or whatever, mm -hmm. like years ago. That would just be very aggressively wanting to like be around me, uh -huh. touch me, you know, make flirtatious moves towards. And it was like, I didn't like that. Yeah, I was like, which is weird. Cause you might be like, Oh, nice. Like, yeah. but it's, it, it wasn't. So no, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say anything out of the ordinary, but there's definitely been just aggressively, aggressively forward yeah. girls that I'm just like, this isn't what I like. Did you ever get random nudes? I've probably gotten two nudes in my entire life. Really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Because I'm I'm like I'm socially we I'm weird with with conversations. It's like even it, it, it's even with with Taylor. You know, it's like you, you get it's like a uh, it's like if you get your significant another maybe like a super like sexy outfit yeah. for like lingerie or something. Yeah. As much as she's gonna look beautiful and sexy and like rock it yeah. like that, but when she like comes into the room, I'm like I'm just like goofy and like awkward. And yeah. I don't know how, I don't know how to accept that. Yeah. So I'm just so awkward as a person, especially when it comes to like being <laughs> I, flirty. I'm just picturing okay, because I'm just picturing. I'm I'm, 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 a, I'm a moment ruiner. I'm a moment ruiner. <laughs> 
<laughs> she could come in the room wearing the sexiest thing in the world and I'll, I'll just say something dumb because I don't know what to say. <laughs> Like, and I'm, cause I'm like, what do I say? Like, oh yeah. yeah. Like, I'll, I'll, you know, yeah, yeah, if it's yeah. some crazy thing, I'll be like, you look like Spider-Man webs all over yeah, or something. She'd yeah. be like, I'm out. Oh, like, yeah, you know, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but, uh, no, I, I think I never, I never got far enough into conversations like that to, I've never asked for a nude of anyone. Yeah. Um, to be honest, I've never actually, I don't, I've never said anything in a message that could come back to bite me. I'm confident in that. There's okay. nothing, I was very, always very cautious with what I said. Okay. And here's something that I can confidently say. There are no pictures of me naked on the internet, wow. period. I've never okay. sent a dick pic. I've never sent any, any yeah, provocative photo provocative. to anyone. I don't gotta worry about anything coming coming back okay, to my well, that's me. good. It is good. <laughs> For you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, we'll end it with um I want I uh, hopefully you have a funny story. Where is I'm not gonna ask you because he was nervous I was gonna ask him. What did I ask Christian? If he eats ass. If he eats ass. Do you wanna answer it? Uh I do not I do not eat ass. <laughs> okay. Is it just not your preference? I'm I think I'm more worried about the sanitation aspects of it. <laughs> I mean, I think when you, I think if you were to go, I mean, if your partner's into it. Yeah. What if Taylor was like, Hey, eat babe. my, <laughs> like, uh, Hey, I want to try this. I would, I would be open to it. Okay. I would be open to it, but I'd probably say something awkward to ruin the moment. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm so PG, I guess with my, I think everyone's different, you know, yeah. I mean, not to, you know, everyone has their quirks and everyone likes to do certain things. But I mean, I understand the sanitary. Like if the there. first time, if I ever like was with a girl or first, let's say the first time Taylor and I ever, yeah. you know, whatever. And, and I come in the room and she's like, Whoops, yeah, take off your clothes. I'd be like, this is weird. <laughs> yeah, this yeah. is weird. Like yeah, <laughs> she yeah. was like in all like leather and like, I'd be like, yeah. I gotta get out of here. Like I'm not, no. I, I couldn't handle it. I feel like. I, I mean, everyone's different. I had a friend who said that on her first date, like not the first date, but the first time they were going to have sex, the guy was like, can you eat my ass? She was like, she put her clothes on. And she's like, I ran out of there as fast as I, could, as I could. And I was like, I cannot imagine because I do think that the eating ass thing is a sanitary thing. Like you have to prep for that. I would prep. imagine. I would think that you would want to prep for that. Some people can go to the club, be sweaty and eat somebody's ass. Oh no. Oh could. no. No, 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 no. I don't know how somebody would want to do that, but. Cause I like to, I like to think of a, this is gonna sound weird, but I'm like, I'm like, you know, a butt's a butt, right? Whether it's a guy butt, girl butt, and in between those butt cheeks, it's all the same, the same thing. And I, I know that I don't want anyone getting near, getting near mine with their mouth. So I'm assuming that you know they're all, they're all kind of weird. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just, I stay away from butts. Okay, okay. So the question I was actually gonna ask you is, where is the craziest place you have had sex at? Bedroom? Are you serious? I, Stop! Cause I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna message Taylor and be like, "Girl, take this man." I mean, out. like uh, other places in in my home. I mean, like I don't like. In a, you you've never done it in a car? Okay, I, when I was in college, yeah, I did a, like a couple times in a car. But even that, I'm more like, I, I just like I can't wrap my head around it because I'm just like. Oh, I get like we shouldn't be doing this here, but I'm like, what, you gotta lift your leg up on this, like on the the center console or something, or like when people want to be in the was the Mile High Club and doing yeah, yeah, I was gonna, yeah, and then I, I'm I like, can't see that. I mean, I don't know how people do it in that small ass bathroom. Like, I don't know. I just what's wrong with a bed? Well, maybe you just haven't ever had like you've never wanted it bad enough. Like right then, and they're like, I have to have you right now. Well, I, I, right, like I have blue balls. I need to have you right now. I feel like if I ever was in that state of mind, I would just be like, Taylor, we need to go home. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. I, I was expecting like something crazy. I guess. What did Christian say? I didn't ask Christian this question. What is, what is the most ridiculous? What is, what is the most ridiculous answer you've gotten of that? Uh, Dan was just, he is part of the mile high club. Dan, Dan, My, mile high club. That yeah. just so. Like, I just don't know how. Like, there's and no, Dan's pretty tall. And I'm like, when when you when you would have that in the mile high club, I'm like, are you? Is it a full session? Are you finishing she, there, or is know. it just like, hey, we just want to say we've done it? Yeah, like because there's like no few way. Strokes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if, the, see, if that's the case, I'd be like, what's the point? Yeah. Well, my thing is everyone like, needs to hit the finish line. The public thing, like, where people not see that you're going 
to have sex because I, I would assume that someone would see a girl go in and then the guy go in. Well, yeah, there's there's then, yeah, there's strategy to it. You know, you have to you have to you know monitor the area. I'm, I'm assuming you have to monitor the area around you. Yeah. Do it, you know, th there. Then maybe I I think you could finesse your way in there. But then, like, what what do you stressed. do if you get caught? What if you got yeah. caught while you're like, do you get in trouble for that? Is it illegal to have two people in the bathroom? I don't know. I don't. I just I would die of embarrassment. I think personally, for me, I, I, that's why. Where's I the craziest know. place you guys have done it? Mm, a fitting room. Mm, at Alpha Land, ladies no. and gentlemen. Oh my god, no! <laughs> oh my god, no! No, 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 no! I think it was at a Zara <laughs> fitting room. I think that's the craziest place, right? Does anything else come to mind? We've done other things in other places. <laughs> what? What are you thinking about? Okay, okay, you're gonna have to tell me this later. I'm, I'm just more worried. I'm like, is this like, are we gonna, are we gonna get? I'm just like a little baby. I'm like, is yeah. we gonna get caught? Is this gonna be one of those things where like, oh, it's gonna take both of us thirty minutes to finish, and like, <laughs> I'm gonna like, yeah, you know, yeah, because I, I, if I'm gonna do it, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta do it right. We gotta do it right. Yeah. And maybe I'm just lame. It's like. What's your favorite position? Be like missionary. Oh my god! Stop. Is that really? They're all great. <laughs> okay. What is? No, I no, want to no. know what's so wrong with with. No, the no, no. There's nothing wrong wrong with missionary. There, uh, no, I, I'm not giving you a hard time about it. But nowadays, I think, if you're not swinging from the from no the, doing the helicopter from the the ceiling fan or something, I don't know. I feel like sex is like bodybuilding. You know, you don't want like you, like people like try to do like different shoulder movements. Like at the end of the day, the shoulder press is going to give you the best. Workout, you know what I'm saying? Like missionary, regular dog in the, style. In the, in the bedroom, I like to do the squat, bench, and deadlift. I don't need <laughs> yeah. I don't need the hoist machine with yeah. the new fancy grip that just yeah. came out. That yeah. like you know that also I like to walk sideways on the treadmill. Yeah, yeah. I, I just like I'm doing the traditional tra stuff because it's tried and true. Yeah, and it <laughs> and it yeah. works. But I'm I'm open if. Taylor ever wanted to right. get a little crazy. All right. Well, Taylor, if you need any any help, let me know. Well, not help, but like I'll give you ideas of where to go. But anyways, thank you so much for coming on the podcast, Max. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Anything else you want to leave folks with? <sighs> Wash your butt, guys. <laughs> Wash your butt. Wash guys. your butt. There you go. There you go. Well, thank <laughs> you so much. I appreciate you. I'll leave every all his info down below for you guys. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the podcast and I'll see you guys next week. Bye. I'm not gonna be the boy